Hey everyone, my name is Miranda Hughes. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe uh, button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Um, I'm going to be jumping right into these just because, like I said, I kind of got done with the introduction stuff. Um, but this video, um, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. <laughs> okay, uh, the song that God gave me is Memory I Don't Mess With by Lee Bryce. And this is kind of about the prodigal, but it's also about the God-ordained spouse. Just because at first when I had this and I wrote my notes for it, I thought it was just about the prodigal. But then when I re-watched the video, the original video for this song... Um, I understood that it was actually about kind of like what we've been going through. And it's basically when you really love someone or you're really supportive of them and you're there for them and they just don't see you. They overlook you and they kind of pass you up and they keep going for other people. And But in the end, you know, after they kind of, you know, um, <laughs> they cherish the moments they have with you, but then they still went off and kind of, you know, the prodigal thing where they went off with other people, sometimes even in front of you and stuff. Um, and you left it alone. You just kind of like let them do their thing. But then when they really needed you, you actually showed up like you're there. Um, this is how it was in the video. Um, but in our case, it's more like God will put us back in together in each other's lives when we need it most. And this is why we need to trust his timing and not our own. Um, and also, sorry guys, it's like really cold out here. It's been rainy all day and stuff, so like I'm in the garage, so I have this like double, I don't know, jacket thing going on, pull over and then a zip up, and it's just a, it's kind of a, I don't even know, it's just some kind of ish, but <laughs> I'm just dealing with it, and um, sorry if that annoys you guys, I'm trying my best to hide it, but anyways, sorry if that looks a little weird. <clears throat> Also, my voice is a little scratchy, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to just push through it. But yeah, so your person, you know, in the video, if you guys watch the or the original, like, official video, it kind of shows the guy being the one who's there for the girl. The girl keeps choosing this other guy, and he's being the wrong guy for her. And um, the guy that the other guy knows it. But he doesn't, you know, he's a gentleman. He doesn't really manipulate, control, or anything like that. He's still treating her with the uppermost respect and kindness anytime he's with her. Just, you know, being the good character guy that he is. And then later, you know, down the road um, in the video, basically he gets into a fight with the guy that was treating her like crap because he had enough of it. And he basically came to her defense and... Got his butt whooped pretty bad. And then basically he ended up being with the girl. But because um, she realized, you know, her worth that, you know, it wasn't worth being with someone like that. If they're just going to put you through pain and not really, you know, love you full heartedly and stuff. And she recognized that while she was away that his. That, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. OK, so God does not ever change. OK, and even though we are people. And we can change um, at any given moment um, from emotions to behaviors, things like that. So this is why God says it's very important if you're going to be a Christian and you're following God that your character reflects Christ. Because if you're consistent with reflecting Christ, God does not change. So that's where if someone can see consistency within you then they know you're going to have their back. They know you're going to, and same thing with them, like if you can see it in another person, like it gives you confidence, it gives you reassurance, it just makes everything so much more like it, easier to trust a little bit and it makes having a relationship that much a little bit easier, you know? If you can trust that they're going to show up when they will and treat you a certain kind of way. So that's basically what she saw in this guy and that's why she recognized by his fruits that, you know, this guy has not changed. He has loved me from the beginning. Even when I blew him off or chose this other dude, he still loved me. And that's what God, I think, I didn't realize this at the time, but this is what God just dropped in my spirit. That, because um, I told him I didn't know how to explain this to, very well to you guys because I thought I messed it up. 
But no, it's basically, that's what God was wanting you guys to understand, and myself included, is that that's how your prodigal is going to see you. Is that when they look back on their memories, they're going to be able to look back and see that you were being consistent the whole time. Like if you said you was going to give a phone call, it was given at the time that you said you'd give it or a text message. Um, if there was a date, you weren't standing them up. Um, you showed up. If you guys were, you know, going to be having conversations and talking, like you kept it going and you actually were genuine in your conversation. So it's like, and even when they left, like, this is why it's so significant when they do come back, that you guys are being compassionate, understanding, and forgiving, because that is the attributes and the characteristics of Christ. And if you represent Christ, you know, that's what you're going to need to be able to display in order for this person to trust you, in order for this person to... um want to continue moving forward and getting to know you and doing all this stuff. So I kind of got off a little track, but God just dropped this literally just now in my spirit and it's too good to not share. So, and this kind of goes along with it because like I said, you might be thinking, well, they hurt me and all this stuff. Well, if you're at that point, then you're not ready to be back in a relationship. It means that you got a lot of healing to do or even just a little bit. And there's just a few pieces that, like God's doing the final touches with on you because if you're going to come into this in a mindset of they did this 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 and be a record keeper of wrongs then it's not going to go well you're going to end up in a fight you're going to end up cussing you're going to end up throwing things assault could happen like any kind of thing because anything escalates in anger okay anything can escalate in anger that's where it really all stems from. So if, if you're jealous, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you're envious, if you're whatever towards your person or about your person, if you're holding grudges, this is not going to go well for you. Like this video is not for you then because it's like, like I said, God is wanting there to be restoration. You know, he wants to be able to fix or restore what the enemy stole or what, you know, happened between you two. And if you're going to let anger and what they did to you get in the way of your promise, then God's like, I'm not giving you your promise yet because I need you to be able to, you know, represent me in the best way possible when this person comes back. So I don't know who all that was for, um, but wow, like that just blew my mind. So like I had to, I had to say that. Thank you for those that are listening. Um, also now I can get into it. Um, I wasn't again, planning on an introduction or anything, but like I said, originally this was just supposed to be for the prodigal. But when I watched the video, I realized it was kind of like our story, like how we're waiting on someone else. But you know, it doesn't really matter. It's the fact that both the prodigal and ourselves experience some kind of pain or experience heartbreak. We experience memories together and then now we have this big gap or this waiting period of you know like when we can be together and so God wants you to understand that it's like you know memory I don't mess with is kind of talking about someone that you absolutely love cherish adore and you did so much for them only to find out that it kind of blew up in your face and because of that it really hurt and that's what I, that's why that yeah, thank you holy spirit that's why he's like connecting all this stuff because he's like you got to realize is your per, your prodigal even though they did you wrong even though they left you in the dust or on the back burner even though they chose other people over you you still mattered in the equation you were still involved you were still a part of their life you were still a choice or an option or you were still um important to them in some way hold on stupid rake <laughs> that thing was about ready to hit me in the face so I was like I'm not doing that <laughs> so basically this is all it is it's very short um and I don't really have any scriptures on this because I'm just going to be real with you guys in case you're wondering why some videos there's a lot of scripture and then little scripture and then some videos there's like none it's because there's videos or music videos that God gives me or music uh, songs that he gives me where 
some of these videos are reflecting their emotions and their thoughts. And that's just where, like I said, God's given me a, the ability to understand these hidden messages or just another way of breaking it down to you guys, I guess, um, in a way that's easier to understand. And it's just, sometimes it's just literally telling you, hey, your person feels sad or your person feels this and this is what they're thinking and that's it. And you're not going to find a Bible verse about that. You might find it a little bit on emotions like anger and sadness and, you know, heartbreak, stuff like that. But then there's times where it's like, if you want to ask them, what are they sad about? And like, how deep is their sadness? Like, you know, how is it affecting them and stuff? It's like, sometimes there's not a Bible verse to go with it. Sometimes. And God's like, I'm just giving this to you. So you have a better understanding of what they're feeling. Cause they're not in your life right now to be able to tell it to you themselves. And even if they did, they might be too prideful or too heartbroken to even express it to you. Or they may not even know how to express it to you. So that is why videos like this do exist. Because it's like, yes, scripture is important. But also just having a, a further understanding of your person is also just as important. So, anyways. I guess now I'm done with that. Sorry. Memory I Don't Mess With. And it's by Lee Bryce. Again, it's for the prodigal and the Goddard Ain't Spouse, us. Um, but it goes like this. There's a memory, or sorry, red leaves on the river, footprints in the sand, cold walk in December, warming up your hands, sundress on the front step, sun up by the lake, blanket down in the backyard, lying wide awake. So these are the memories that this person's thinking about. They're just like, if I go back in time to when I was with you, this is what I think about. This is what comes to mind. The second paragraph is, that's a memory I don't mess with. The girl I was the best with. The one I was obsessed with. Girl, you just don't get it. I'd fall right back with one slip. Always leave me helpless. Don't hate me. I can't help it. Gotta leave us where we left it. You're a memory I don't mess with. This is basically you and your prodigal don't want to reflect on what happened between you two too deeply. Like you guys think about the memories when they emerge, but you do not nitpick at what happened. You just kind of like let them happen and you're like, oh yeah, that's nice. Or like, I remember that. But once you start and you like going back to when the reality kicks in of like, oh yeah, they left or oh yeah, they said this or oh yeah, they did that. It's like you immediately like just shut it off and you're just like, nope, like I'm not going to let my mind think about that because I don't want to be emotional today. I don't want to cry today. I don't want to be angry today, like whatever it is. So you just, you kind of, you kind of like suppress it. Basically you and your prodigal are both doing this and this is kind of where, and God just recently had me do this where he brought me back to that night when um, I met my person and basically I spent almost like, I don't even know, three or four different times throughout the day just processing and reflecting what happened and getting on Google and searching up terms or searching up um, anything that related to what it was that God was trying to reveal to me, looking for answers and truth and stuff like that. Um God would give me like a word either from the Bible or he would give me like a word as far as like just a personal word about me and my prodigal. And then I would just use that to look up different things for explanations and stuff. Um, guy's perspective, things like that. And it blew me away because it was like, wow, like I was kind of wrong about my prodigal. I was like, okay, so this actually is what he was feeling or this is what he was thinking and it just it shifted the perspective and it was like I never would have gotten that if I hadn't had obeyed God and just actually allowed myself to you know bring up those memories and actually fully let them play out or to go back and ask myself why did this happen or what did you know why did that happen and I've actually been in therapy before I did a year and a half and I can tell you right now like the processing thing of the brain is truly legit because you're right up here I don't know how to like just the uh, center part of your brain um, not center but the forefront in the center of your head in the front 
that is responsible for processing kind of like filing or sorting out your emotions and identifying things like that and knowing where to put them so if someone said something to you <clears throat> and it made you angry your brain would be like okay that word is associated with anger now because now it's a trigger because now it knows what to do it, it knows that okay if i hear that word my response is going to be i'm angry and this is where you know the only way you're going to understand a little bit more about yourself and about a little bit about others is to allow yourself to break it down process process and break it down the event the incident the outcome in order to get to the nitty-gritty and know what it was that set you off that triggered you that made you sad that made you happy that made you laugh or cry or whatever it was and once your brain is able to identify that it can store it or put it in its little filing cabinet as this is just how it was explained to me um, in first res first responder class and also um, doing therapy like it's the same thing basically your brain's just trying to figure out everything every detail and if you don't process things, if you don't allow yourself to go back in time to that, you're not staying in the past. You're just, you're allowing your brain to take you back to that day, even though it's painful, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's not something you want to do. If you can allow your brain to do that, you will actually get more answers than what you thought possible. So, like I said, just keep allowing God to take you deeper and deeper into truth and deeper in the healing process. And if you do this, you're not going to, you're just going to be thankful that you did because you're going to rediscover some new things and maybe a different perspective. God can finally show you a different perspective about your person. Because now when you go back, you might, God might show you and be like, did you really have to say that? Did you, did your person really mean that? Are you sure? And it's not about doubt. It's just, God might want to show you a different perspective or your person in a different light. And back then it would have been really, really hard to see your person in that light, in a compassionate light, in a forgiving light, because at that time you were angry or that time you're just so, oh my gosh, I love you. Like, um, you miss stuff. And so when you're able to, it's kind of like watching a movie one time and then having to go back and rewatch it and learning something totally different that you didn't see before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's pretty much what it's like. So anyways, the next paragraph is moonlight on the back seat, breeze through the wires, Springsteen on the speakers, girl, I'm on fire. That stuff I don't think about because it still kills me now. I still can't dance around. That memory I don't mess with, the girl I was the best with, the one I was obsessed with, girl, you just don't get it. I'd fall right back with one slip. Always leave me helpless. Don't hate me. I can't help it. Gotta leave us where we left it. Your memory I don't mess with. Like you and your prodigal both. You just don't you just don't don't want to some people call it kicking the dead horse or like you don't want to bring up old memories if you think they're dead and should be just like forgotten about. It's like no, God's like you need to revisit some of those memories. This is only for who it's for, like I said. You'll know because you'll be able to relate to this and God's already talked to you about it. Um but yeah, basically it's just talking about it hurts them and you when you both think about or acknowledge what they um, that they had hurt you or didn't be the person that you needed them to be or that they didn't think that you were being the person they wanted you to be while you guys were with each other. Um, so you both do your best to not think about it. And I just explained to you in thorough depth why it's significant that you actually kind of go back. Again, this isn't... To dwell in the past this is just to get a sharper crisper perspective on if there just ask god to show you thank you holy spirit if there's anything you missed about yourself or your prodigal that you know maybe could have been said differently or done differently or if um to just show you the things the hidden things you do not know which is jeremiah 33 3 there we go there yep there it is see i knew there was a bible verse <laughs> I forgot because I started to think that there wasn't. And then I was like, no, nope. It's Jeremiah 33.3. Okay. Next part is um, God keeps flooding their hearts and minds with all the good and beautiful memories y'all had together to soften their heart. 
Um, he's also going to be doing this with you as well. And then the last part is, it's good running into you like this, but girl, I'm as close as I can get. Um, that's what they think. And you know otherwise. You know your person's supposed to be coming back. You know that you're going to be reunited. They may know that, but they may think that it's going to be impossible or they may think that you want nothing to do with them because they just feel like they messed it up too bad. Excuse me. And it's the little things that are cherished most. Um, you know, and it's, uh, as far as memories go, like it, it could be anything small. It doesn't have to be something major, but, uh, when it comes to like them running into you like this, what it's talking about is dreams, memories, thoughts, possibly visions. And for some of you, very, very slight few, um, you may have ran into your person, whether it be by accident or when I say accident, I just mean like you're minding your own business, like I said, shopping or something, and you just happen to look over and you just so happen to see them. You guys are at the same store. Or it could be one of those things where they see you and you don't know it, or you see them and they don't know it. So, and you're thinking, man, that's as far as I can get. Like, I can't go over and talk to you because it might be too weird or awkward, or you might hate me and cause a scene, or embarrass me or reject me. So it's like, it could be one of those things. But the point is, is that, you know, God is truly working on their behalf with us and on our behalf with them. Like he's not forgotten anybody and he's totally, totally doing all of this in his own timing, but he is doing it swiftly. So that's why there's a flooding of the memories. This is why it's so important that if, if you keep, that's what I mean is like, you'll know it's for you is if you've been wondering lately why all of a sudden that, um, <laughs> you have a, a, a total, I don't know flood of memories coming about this person whether it be from one night or the night that they left or things that they said basically whatever the particular memory is is what it is that God wants you to work on going back to because if it's everything then it's like there's something missing you know if it's just one there's a piece of I don't know help me out God I don't know how to say this There's a piece of the puzzle that you might be missing as far as what truly went down. Like you may have missed the fact that something that you had said could have triggered them and then they just reacted versus you thinking in your mind that, man, they were just being really rude for no reason kind of thing. Um, Cause like I said, you may not know this person's past. You may not know everything about them. So you may not understand that what their triggers are yet um, until they come back and you guys talk. And then lastly is, like I said, is if you guys, even if it's not a whole bunch of memories, if it's just one specific part of the memory or one specific um, conversation or one specific text or video chat, whatever it is that happened um, that God keeps taking you back to, it's not without reason. Like God wants you to... Ask him to show you the hidden things about that particular moment or that memory. Because there might be something where he's trying to give you clarity through him instead of you seeking whoever. Because um, again, we're not supposed to be talking that I know of. Maybe you guys are different, but I'm just saying like for me, God doesn't want me talking to friends and family and things like that about my prodigal. And he wants me to trust him. He wants me to turn to him. Um, if I talk to anyone about a prodigal, it's you guys. That's pretty much it. Um, but again, I don't know uh, what God's told you, but that's what God's told me. So you guys could be different than me, but just be careful who you are talking to about this stuff. If it's a therapist, that's one thing. If it's a doctor, that's another thing. But if it's a, a friend or family member, be ve tread very cautiously because you don't know if that person is truly not supporting you and could be like low key jealous or low key sabotaging things. Um, sorry guys. So that's why you just want to be very, very cautious. And since also I had enough of you guys, more than one who, uh, put down in the comment section, um, interested in more 
I will be doing a video. I don't know when, but I'm going to have to look at my calendar and stuff like that and figure that out. And also have God lead me as far as when the best day is to release that stuff to you guys. Because I don't want it to be too long. Because again, like, I don't know when my person's coming back, but it this is about you guys. Like, regardless whether when my person comes back, it's like, I'm going to keep going with these videos until God tells me to stop. Because you guys matter and it's like big this is bigger than me so it's like it doesn't matter when my person comes back the point is is that i'm going to keep doing these videos and helping you guys in any way i can because that's what god has called me to do okay so i love you guys that was memory i don't mess with by lee bryce and it basically just boils down to there are Certain memories that you and your prodigal made together, moments that, of memories that you guys made together, that you both may not be doing your best to think on just because you don't want to be emotional or you don't want to feel any kind of way, which is fine. But like, again, if God, if it keeps coming back to your head or in your heart, like you just keep thinking, oh my gosh, I have to there's something I missed about that situation or I just keep thinking about it recently. This is why, because God wants to give you some clarity, some insight. He wants you to ask him Jeremiah 33 verse three, you know, show me the hidden things. God says, I will show you the hidden things that you do not know. And those are the hidden things. Like they're hidden for a reason, which means if you want to find out, you're going to have to seek God. You're going to have to, go into prayer. You may even have to fast or you may just have to eliminate all distractions and just sit in quiet peace with God. Have your Bible ready, pen and pencil ready. And then if he tells you anything, just write it down and then go look it up on Google or YouTube or look it up in the Bible, like whatever it is. First thing you hear, just write it down and ask God for confirmations too. Ask him to show you what those hidden things are. And then once he tells you, or you feel like it's him telling you, ask him for confirmation that that truly was him. And then he'll take it from there. But that's the best advice I can give you. Sorry, this one is a little bit longer. Not my intention, but like I said, um, God just wants to make sure that you guys are taking the right steps towards your promised land and that you guys are truly ready. So even though these videos are kind of a little bit longer here and there, um, like I said, I hope it's adding a, very much a lot of value into your life. And I hope it's like just being very impactful and helping you guys whatever, with whatever it is that you may be struggling with. Okay. Um, cause like I said, I can do these videos, but I can't hear you guys. Um, the only time I know if you need help with something is if you put it in the comments and you let me know that you're in need of prayer or if you guys reach out to me through my email and you personally let me know that hey you got something going on there's a couple of you that have reached out to me and i haven't been able to reach back out yet um to respond um please don't feel like i'm ignoring you it's actually i'm just trying to figure out a better way to explain some things um because again i don't want to cause any confusion or anything like that um and it just kind of like also trying to find the time of when to sit down and just write it too. Because some of this stuff isn't just a few words to answer it. It's like a paragraph or two. And I just want to make sure I make it as simple and easy to understand as possible when I do respond. Um, in the shortest amount of time as I possibly can. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Um, God bless. And also don't forget... Everything that I do is down in the descriptions for the song, uh, the playlist, the, the Bible scriptures, um, the other platforms that I'm on that God has me doing other stuff like the podcast and then Walk in Your Worth. Also being on TikTok. Um, Facebook I get on a little bit. I don't really do too much on there anymore. Um, but I have some stuff. And then... Uh, yeah, if you haven't yet, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and the notif notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. And I hope to see you on the next video. Alright, bye guys.